What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jam at Full Grip Games. Today, I'm going to be showing off Baby Blacephalon in this stream gameplay video, but I wanted to take a minute to show off two different ways to play Baby Blacephalon. This is Stefan's Bacham, Bacham? Bacham? Regional Championship winning list, Greens Blacephalon. It utilizes the Greens Exploration Engine in order to find key cards like Fiery Flint and Fire Crystal to pull off big Fireball Circus attacks with Baby Blacephalon. And then also has Blacephalon GX for game-winning Burst GX attacks, also Mind Blown, a possibility two at the end of the game, and Victini Prism Star for Infinity, but mostly Blacephalon GX for the one energy attacks, Bursting Burn and Burst GX. With Custom Catchers, you have the ability to target down whatever you want on your opponent's side of the field. Ultra Space, a great consistency card for searching out your Blacephalon since they are Ultra Beasts. And with Rosa, you can also get energy and key trainer cards that you need after one of your Blacephalon gets knocked out. 16 Fire Energy, so tons of Fire Energy in the deck. In order to pull off huge fireball circuses, so congrats to Stefan on a regional win. It was actually a baby Blacephalon mirror in the finals with Stefan's Greens Blacephalon deck taking it all. There was also a uh, baby Blacephalon deck featuring Pidgeotto. This is my favorite way to play the deck, and this is not the second place list. I don't know if the second place list has been revealed yet, but... This list is based off of uh, Jeff's uh, top 16 list from the Knoxville Regional Championships, updated with great catchers in the list now instead of custom catchers. Obviously, Stefan still prefers custom catchers, but I think that uh, I really do like great catchers in here, and they work just as well in many scenarios. And then, of course, you have the Pidgeotto engine in order to airmail and draw through your deck. It's very good for drawing out of reset stamp and just getting yourself the resources that you need in order to win games. And as you'll see in the gameplay, I'm actually able to compete with and even beat a Pidgeotto control deck thanks to the Pidgeotto engine that we do have in the deck. Overall, I think this list could use a fourth Fiery Flint. Four Fiery Flint is becoming pretty standard in a lot of these decks, but all in all, it is a great consistent list, and I really like the way this deck works. With the rise of tag team Pokemon, it's really cool to see the meta shift yet again to these powerful non-GX Pokemon with not a lot of Malamar showing up to the regional championship or at the top tables. Blacephalon was really able to prosper, and it was definitely cool to see these fire-type decks at the top tables at the Bauckham Regional Championship. So make sure to check out the gameplay following here, and hopefully you all like the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, and check out fullgripgames.com for all your trading card game singles. Also, we've got bulk for booster boxes, pre-orders for Sword and Shield booster boxes as well on fullgripgames.com as well as a new buy list where we will send you cash for your Pokemon cards that are on our buy list. So make sure to check out the buy list tab on fullgripgames.com. Enjoy the video. Really excited for next week. We're going to be getting into some Sword and Shield tabletop. So um, hopefully you guys are stoked about that. I've... Like deck building is probably my favorite part about playing Pokemon cards, getting to be creative with new decks and kind of try to, you know, pave a path for new metagames. It's like really exciting. I think everybody probably enjoys that aspect of Pokemon cards for sure. All right, this opening hand is really good. So we're just going to set up like this. I think we can even bench this other Blacephalon and we're good to go. Just, they can't really knock out our active turn one. It's not, not really a thing they can do. So we're just going to pass. Sabin, no, I pretty much just play uh, Pokemon cards. Optimal way against that ADP Purge deck. You don't clear vision if it means your Latios gets hit by Ultimate Ray. Just go Tag Purge right off the bat. That makes sense. 
Edwin. Uh, if you just go tag purge right off rip, then you can, um, you just put the Mew down and I'm assuming then that you just rely on Mew to prevent them from using their GX attack with, uh, you know, with the birds. And you kind of just rely heavily on Mew to get you there, which makes sense. We should see how this matchup goes for us. I mean, we should be okay if we can just get, if we could just get like kind of popped off here, we'll be fine. I think honestly, we may even just prefer to go for birds this turn if we can find them rather than welder. Yeah, so I'd rather use the Elms Lecture and just stabilize our board. So we'll just go get some Pidgeotos. And I could just retreat into Jirachi. So I like this play a lot better because it's gonna like pretty much guarantee us a knockout next turn rather than trying to sack my way into a knockout this turn with the welder. This sets us up for a much higher potential next turn. I don't think I need the Victini yet. Just need fire energies into our hand. Yeah, my hand is looking very good for next turn, should they use their GX attack or whatever. I think we're just sending them straight to Punish Island. We'll save our Pidgeotos. And Stellar Wish. Now I am, unfortunately, you know, with the retreat into Jirachi there, I am going to have to find myself in a skateboard. It's not always the easiest thing to do, unfortunately. Sini says, Andrew, can you do something with a grass type gorilla? Rillaboom, guys excited for Rillaboom, gets you to, uh, what, you accelerate two, all right, we got some time, I'm down, that's a little airmail first, and then just hoping, technically we should thin our deck, before we airmail, since we're digging for one card in particular, which is the escape board, which is right there. Let's go. So we'll do that. Heat Factory 2. And I'm thinking that this guy is a goner. Cool. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. We're chilling. And I would like to even Great Catcher up that other one. That'd be great. And we get Stellar Wish. Oh, yeah. Could even Heat Factory. Beautiful. This hand is just loaded at this point. Absolutely everything we need. And I'm probably going to take out that ADP. So there are... I need this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, yeah, so we're going to Great Catcher, and then I have two Fire in the discard. We're going to go to three. That's fine. The fire Crystal will get it back. So we're going to take out that, and we're going to take out probably the Ultra Space. Fine. Don't really need those. Bench this guy, fire crystal three back, and good to go. It's really been fun to see Baby Blacephalon come all the way, you know, up in the metagame. I remember when this card was first released, talking with Brady Botner about it, and just telling Brady, 
I thought that this card would never be good. I really didn't believe in it, you know? Uh, just from like, I guess just from like a, a deck standpoint, I was like, all right, Fireball Circus costs three energy. Putting three energy onto a non-GX with 120 hit points without the use of like Malamar is not easy. Um, I also thought that getting this many energy into your hand was also not easy. And now that the lists have really been refined, you know, obviously, you know, that Jeff dude really, uh, you know, really getting this version very popular with the Pidgeotto as the backbone of the deck. Very cool to see. Also, the Greens version. I mean, that's ultimate. I never believed in the Greens version of this deck. I was like, ah, oh, it'll just get reset stamped. You only have so many attackers. You know, Sir Pandage, sometimes you just gotta, sometimes you just gotta embrace, embrace it. You feel me? Like right now, I'm having a blast. We get to just airmail, airmail, here we go. Airmail. And then just, uh, you know, knock this dude's socks off. It's gonna be a great. It's gonna be a blast. I'm very excited. Let's see how many fire are actually left in the deck. Do I win? I win. That's it. GGs. You do love to see it. Baby Bliss F1. GG's Vendra. <laughs> oh, Natalie with the troll. Actually, it's pretty skill intensive because you have to pick a car off of airmail. I think that the greens version is probably more skill intensive. If I had to say, greens is definitely a little bit more skill intensive than the... Uh, than the bird version, that's for sure. The bird version is just, you know, we just big sack in our opponents all day. Set up birds, get some blounds out. We don't even have to choose. I mean, instead of choosing like, you know, which two cards we need out of our entire deck with Green's Exploration, instead, the only choosing I have to do with this version of the deck is which two cards, which of two cards do I want off the top of my deck? Yeah, I think with just much more selection happening and much more limited draw, you know, the more limited draw makes it so that each of your little micro decisions with the Green's Placephalon deck is just much more impactful. But I have to say, the deck rocks. I mean, uh, look at that. ADPs, Mewtwo's. Though Mewtwo can be very hard for us to beat because of Cross Division GX. That's a problem. Cross Division. Oh, what is this? Oh, I don't know. It's Pidgeotto Control. Pidgeotto Control should be cool, right? We just go with like Heatran and Victini, potentially? Or is it just Victini? We just go Victini? <laughs> I think we can beat Pidgeotto Control, potentially. If that is what we're up against. Sini, we already did our drawings. You missed it. The drawings happen very early. You got to get here early if you have 8,000 tricky points and want to redeem a drawing. Today we did Farfetch'd. 
Look at him. We also did Croagunk. And I did a... Oh, Misty. Look, with the to Togepi. <laughs> oh, yeah. Pidgeotto control. What can we do? So I feel like our ideal attacker is probably Heatran. I think so. Having no switch cards in the deck definitely hurts. I feel like I want to kind of like soak these cards to my hand before I start drawing. Fiery Flint is good. Okay. And really, it'd be ideal just to hit another Elms if I could. Victini is a piece of this that we need. So we can go in with Victini. No, I don't... Yeah, I have no chance of knocking out this Oranguru. We could just attack with Victini. Is that the strat? Yo, what's up, Audio Freak? Uh, we could just Infinity with Victini every single turn, but then they might try to knock out my Victini, which seems problematic. I don't necessarily like that. I'll take my time to lecture one more time first. Okay. Yeah, that seems good. Let me go here and just prepare for our next Pidgeotto, and we pass. Victini does need to eventually be on the board, so I think that's probably fine to put down. And then we do need to make sure that we don't bench lock ourselves, but there's nothing else that we really need other than Heatran and Victini. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and I think that seems fair. So we kind of like, yeah, we want to have some protection against Absol just in case they do get Absol going. I think Victini being on the bench is fine, just in case they do, like, stamp me or something, because they know my hand is kind of loaded at this point. I'm just looking for Heatran, and the Victini is going to, you know, eventually need to be in play. So I don't think there's any real harm in putting him down. He's got a retreat of one. It's probably fine. But the Drachi is still sleeping, which is sad. I'm going Heat Factory just to give me a little bit more of an explosive draw potential to find my Heatran. Yes, that too. That too. I feel like the Blacephalon can just go into the discard pile. That thing, I mean, what do we need that for? Or not discard pile, but bottom of the deck. Still looking for our Heatran. There he is. But we do not have ourselves a switch yet. And we are still asleep. Just sad. So, come welder. There it is. And we want to keep our welders so they don't get milled. So that's good. And I do get to move that energy up. Which is neat. I don't think I need a fourth or whatever. I mean, 
I think a fourth doesn't hurt though. So we'll just put a fourth on. Just it's like a little bit of extra insurance against crushing hammer or whatever. Like I wanna strike this balance between being able to survive crushing hammers without having to welder again. Ideally, we wanna save our welders for if we get co like cold crushed, right? So I think this is kind of the ideal board state for me. Um, I think probably, you know, an escape board might be good on, like somewhere else on the board, but. Yeah, four energy on Heatran seems about right. That way it's like, it could hit two crushing, crushing hammerheads. But still, like I might need to manually attach to Victini as well while we're doing this, kind of keep fire energies manually attached to Victini because I want to be able to be in a spot where, you know, I may have to get myself out of the active with Heatran to attack with Victini at some point. Sini says, I have a question about the drawings. Is there a limit to how much detail you would put into a drawing? Um, like, what do you mean? Ah, that's, that's kind of gnarly. I don't actually want to draw more cards at this point. So I'm pretty content. And their draw is not very good right now. But yes, we want to kind of pump the brakes on drawing cards. I have pretty much everything that I need in my hand. The other board could be prized. We could take a look at that. Champions Festival. What's up, David Cook? Um, as far as detail that I put into drawings, like, I don't know. I, I do my best. I do my thing with all of them. I don't know, like... Every single one is its own creation, and uh, every single one is special in its own way, and every single one, we are just winging it. So the only rule is that I have to be winging it. So long as I'm winging it, then the drawings are fine. Take a look at the deck real quick, see my resources. Yes, my other escape board is prized. Two fire left in deck. One crystal, that's fine. <laughs> that tight null drawing has some dope shoes. And yeah, Full Grip does ship the uh, the pre-order product for Sword and Shield as early as we can. And since we are hosting a pre-release, I think we are allowed to uh, we are allowed to do it slightly earlier than your big box retailers. There is a rule about that. Like if you host a pre-release, you're you're allowed to sell the cards a little bit earlier than your big box retailers. So if you would like to get a hold of your Sword and Shield booster boxes and all of that as soon as possible. Definitely make sure to check out FullGripGames.com for your pre-orders. Ah, and here we go. Now, ooh, we got Welder Fire, so even with Absol, I can Welder onto the Jirachi and Retreat. I think the odds of this sticking were pretty low. Yeah, the crystal gets it for us. Or the fiery flint. And then... I just water onto the active retreats. And I could take a knockout with Victini... Just to throw some fire back into the deck. It's like not the worst. Um, yeah, it's probably fine. Mm 
Oh, bad. Bad, Andrew. All right. <laughs> Retreat. All right, so we would have... Yeah, that's fine. Panage says an extra Jirachi. Yeah. Yeah, probably an extra Jirachi would be good. I do have a lot of welders left, too, though. I mean, I have two welders left. We only need to take two more prizes. I like the Heatran, like, ready to knock out an Articuno. That's kind of my thought, I think, is that we're, like, ready to knock out Articuno with the Heatran if we need to. Um, also, the reason why I went Victini there was because it's just, like, it's more inconsequential if it gets, you know, cold crushed. Like this, with two cards, you know, two prizes left. If we get cold crushed, you know, the Heatran's here. It's kind of like that double threat. And with three Pidgeotos out, like we're, we're chilling pretty good right now for sure. Yeah, I don't want to say that it's for sure over, but it feels like it. With the amount of resources that I have left. Two welders, a bunch of fire energy. We just chucked more fire energy back into the deck with Victini. It's fine. Even if he knocks out the Victini at this point, Heatran's still here, can do 200 damage pretty easily. You know, two prizes left. He can't really put the Articuno into play. Double Crushing Hammer. Double Tails. And we're chilling. All right, so I just have to get some Fire Energy into the discard pile. To attack with Victini. Not taking a knockout. I need to take a knockout this turn. I could retreat. Don't love to do that, but... Certainly a possibility. And then they will cold crush my Heatran. Which is not exactly what I want. I don't think... It's Elm's Lecture. Okay, I do have Fiery Flint left in the deck. So it is possible for me to take a knockout with Victini. I would much rather do that. Cool. So that's fine. I guess I could have searched the deck with Ultra Space too. Hmm. Pandage says you have the option to not KO Jirachi, force him to use Belba's second ability, then you can discard Jirachi. He doesn't want to be bench locked and wants a spot for Guru. Right. But then, like, what do I do? Like, what's my end game? You know? I guess he's got to put a Guru down. Hmm. Yeah, well, let's air me out a little bit. I think I like not KOing the Jirachi better than leaving Heatran active. I mean, bringing Heatran up definitely feels a little bit sketchy. I don't think that's exactly where we want to be. But... Um, we could potentially, two welders left, alternatively, what do we knock out with Heatran, that eh, just feels, feels bad either way. We'll bite. Okay, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Alright. I think we're just here. 
and kind of seeing what happens. I think I have enough juice in my deck to make it. Still missed our escape board there. Or our escape board's last prized, which definitely is a bummer. They have to Articuno me this turn. Yeah, Pandage, I know. That's why I've been trying to be a little bit conservative with my airmails. Definitely just getting into this final grind here. We'll kind of see how it buffs out. I have a lot of fire crystals left. I have a lot of fire energy in my deck. Here's Articuno. We have a great catcher left as well. So I can hit it for 130. I can potentially, I can still hot burn GX as well. So I can even hit it for one, that kind of hurts. I can hit it for 130. Jesse and James with my big old hand. Okay. Sure. I still think, like, don't I just welder? I think I welder and steaming stomp it. If I can. And then I can hot burn GX for game. I can even just hot burn GX for 50. We'll see if the Poke Gear. I kind of want to see if. Two welders left in deck. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just going to two hit KO this thing no matter what. It's got us a welder right there. So I don't even really need to. like do too much air mailing. And I know I'm kind of like doing this in like wonky ordering right now because usually you air mail first, but I'm trying to be very aware of like how many cards I have left in deck. I want to put myself in a position where I don't like get double bell bud. Yeah, so we're just gonna steaming stop. And then like if he uses the Incomplete Pokedex. I only have 11 cards left in deck, so I'm trying to not airmail. That was the point of doing that. I'm trying to not airmail at all. Right? Because if I had airmailed there, then I would only have five cards left in deck, which I could definitely lose. So we want to be able to just play without airmailing, make him shuffle my hand back into my deck with a stamp or something, but he doesn't want to do that either because if he stamps me, then he's further from milling me out. So we're kind of in this situation where he either has to hot burn G or he either has to like Misty and Lorelei to, you know, the worst thing would be if he Misty and Lorelei's cold crush GXs and Belba's? and Belbas and hits my last welder. That would be, but it looks like he's going straight for the Misty. So like that would be very bad. But even then I could hot burn GX for game. So actually I think I'm just in like a checkmate scenario. I don't think that they can possibly win because they're just gonna get rid of my energy and then I'm gonna hot burn GX for game. Skadoosh, right? So this is kind of like the end game that we imagined ourselves getting into. And that's just GG's. So, pretty good there. Nav stalkers. <laughs> there we go. We'll take it. Blagephalon, broken deck. Feels good to be Pidgey. Deck is. Yikes. Deck's rough. You guys remember Garchomp Giratina? What happened to Garchomp Giratina? I haven't played Garchomp Giratina in a little while. Did it have any finishes at Bauckham? I feel like the deck is less popular. I used to see it all over the ladder every single day. Oh, Sini, I got to go back and read that. I got swiped up in the... Uh... You said you want a Geodude. Okay, that's sleeping and he's having a dream where he's standing on a podium with a gold medal around his neck 
and says first, and he's flexing with a mean face. Can you draw this for me? Uh, all right, CNE, we're going to say it like this, okay? When you request when you request a drawing, you can ask for whatever you want. You're free to ask for whatever you want. But as with everything, it's artist discretion. So I'm just going to I'm going to do whatever I I'm, I'm going to do whatever I feel like. Um as with any of the drawings, but I'm always open to some fun. You know, if you've got an idea, go ahead and, you know, type as much inspiration for the drawing as you want. But what you get is what you're going to get. All right. Now these are the kind of starts that sometimes, you know, just get moving very fast, which can be exciting. If we just draw into some crazy cards this next turn off of my Pidgeotto or whatever, you know, we get a quick fireball circus and knock this thing out. Yeah, let's take a look at the, I'm going to look at the Bauckham Regional Championships again. Yeah, still only the top list. Stefan's list is on limit list right now. And then there was a Pidgeotto Control deck, two Mewtwo decks, an ADP deck. That was Pedro. And then the Ramperdose deck. And then two Baby Blacephalon in the finals. No Malamar. No Garchomp Giratina. All right, chat. Let's see what we get. Two hundred. How'd you do that? What did you welder? Okay. I certainly don't need another Pidgeotto. I certainly don't need another energy on my active. I think I just retreat into Jirachi and try to set up differently. Honestly. Hitting this thing for 150 seems bad, so I know that seems like a weird play, but I would much rather have more Pidgeotos set up. So we're going to Fiery Flint here, get some more fire to my hand, and then hopefully Welder into some Pidgeys. Really just trying to take the safe route here. Because this matchup should be free for us. We just need to stabilize a little bit in order to do so. So that's fine. This is a good place to be for next turn. We're ready to go with the knockouts. Wow, Edwin says there was only one Tina Chomp in all of day two at the Bakken Regional Championships. Yeah, I mean, people came prepared for it, for sure. Uh, the deck was, you know, the most, you know, targeted deck in standard formats, and I think that, uh, you know, probably a decent amount of Guardi Sylveon seeing played, and then decks that were beating Guardi Sylveon kind of rise to the top, if I had to guess. Picaram was being played as well, and I guess. Pikaram was doing well against the Garchomp Giratinas, if I had to guess. Jay Stewart says, Andrew, you got multitasking skills, doing kickflips, drawing picks, playing busted decks, keep it up. You know, thank you, Jay Stewart, for the 100 bits, and I appreciate the encouragement. Sometimes I feel like it must be a pain to watch me because I just am so scatterbrained all the time, but I'm glad, hey, at least somebody's digging it. I appreciate it. I think at this point, that's just kind of a part of the charm, right? Is that uh, it's just cra craziness. All right, we only got one more Blacephalon, but that's fine. We're chilling. 
I get to airmail a couple of times, and I got more than enough energy to be able to knock this dude out. So that's good. And him playing the Ultra Space for me, also very good. Four fire energy in the discard pile. I don't even necessarily want to... Let's see, we'll get those back, and then what am I looking at as far as... I need six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got two. Okay, so I can safely welder to this other one. Two, just to get that established. Get a little bit of a bigger hand size. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Cool. So we'll just take that knockout. No risks on the heat factory or anything like that. And we'll do our 300 damage. Edwin says, do I need to join the stream earlier to spend your coins on a drawing of Ultra Necrozma? Yeah, Edwin. To give you an idea, the drawings sold out in like the first five minutes of the stream. They did. It was even like the, the drawings like sold out during the stream starting screen. All three had been redeemed. So... I like it that way, though. I mean, that to me is like that creates excitement about getting here early. So I'm into that. I think three drawings per stream is like perfect. It gets just the right amount to where it doesn't get old or outplayed. And I think that, you know, it's uh, it's fun. It's something that I get to do every day. And I really enjoy doing it. Yes, Pandage. Got to get here early if you want a drawing. They sell out fast. And thank you guys so much for all the love this week. It has been awesome. And uh, thank you guys for the follows as well. We are very close, very, very close to getting to 8,000 followers here on the channel. So if you're hanging out, make sure to check the follow. Make sure that you uh, follow the channel. Appreciate all of the follows. We're definitely getting closer and closer to 8K. We're at 7,937. It was very close. I think like the dream would be to like have one day have 10K followers. That would be, that'd be insane. All right, we got a pretty good shot to win the game right here. Just going to take a knockout with this Bocephalon. Uh, I've got the escape board so we can promote the Jirachi. Is good? Okay. I don't think there's anything left in here. Two fire crystals and only three fire left in deck, so we're running a little bit low on resources. But that's fine. I could Elm's Lecture first. I'm down three welder. I think that's actually fine. I think we are going to Elm's Lecture first. There's only one welder left in the deck, and I'm going to save it because I'm not really... Even if I miss this attack, I'm not really in danger of, like, losing, I don't think. We're going to thin the deck again. No, we're not. It's cool. We only set up two Pidgeotos, so, like, I'm not going to be terribly surprised if we miss this. Which it looks like we did. They can only Stellar Wish once. So this hand is gigantic, but it has nothing good in it. I'll take the Fire Crystal. And then I'm just going to set up another Pidgey. It's not really worth using Heat Factory, I don't think. I mean, if I Heat Factory into... It would need to Heat Factory into two more Fire Crystals. If a Fire Crystal Heat Factory, two more Fire Crystals. I mean, like, what are the odds of that? go for it thank you so much stand free for the sub yeah I agree with that I think we could stellar wish one more time too pretty safely just go here 
and say, all right, we're just going to Stellar Wish again. HPU3! Someone got a hold of your account! You're gifting five more <laughs> subs! HPU3, let's go! Thank you so much, HPU3. I'm gonna save that board and pinch that. We're just gonna pass. HPU3, 26 total gifted subs to the channel. Let's go, chat. Let's get some hype. Thank you so much. HPU3 for the generosity. And thank you so much, Stan Free1989, the Twitch Prime sub. Let's go, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, HPU. Really appreciate you guys. I don't, we don't, eh, I don't deserve you guys. We don't deserve you guys. Thank you so much, HPU. And welcome new subs. Make sure to link up your Discord to your Twitch account. That way you can access the sub only Discord. You guys are amazing. I'm speechless. Thank you guys so much for the continued generosity and just for supporting the channel. Thank you guys for supporting the shop at Full Grip Games as well. Thank you guys so much. We're, lo we're working on getting our pre-orders up for Sword and Shield PTCGO codes. Oh, Valero, thank you. Uh, we're getting our Sword and Shield pre-orders up for PTCGO codes. So if you're looking to guarantee yourself some Sword and Shield PTCGO codes, we're gonna have those up on fullgripcodes.com um, today, actually. We plan on getting those up today. So make sure to check out Twitter. I will be announcing it on Twitter and in the sub Discord when those do go live. Uh, I think we're gonna start out with like 8,000 codes or something like that for pre-order. And the codes do always go quickly. So that is uh, something that you wanna get kind of locked down for sure, because those go fast. The code's very popular, turns out, as this is Probably the easiest way to play the Pokemon trading card game is online, I have to say. All right, we should be good for a game here. Plenty of cards. One Fire Crystal left in deck, one Fiery Flint. We're actually... We're actually kind of, like, very close to being out of resources, so I'm glad I played that conservatively. Actually, do I have enough? Yes, I have two fire crystals in my hand. I actually have game right here. Yep. I was thinking for a second that I only had one. Yeah. I'll just get all those back. And take them out. And that's it. GG's. <laughs> I'm relaxed as I could use the beautiful Psyduck now. The Psyduck is definitely one of my favorites as far as the emotes go. The Psyduck is amazing. Yo, Landon! What? Let's go, Landon. Gifting five. Yo, you guys, you guys rock. Hopefully you like this song because we're going to be hearing it. Five more spins. Let's go, Landon. Let's go. I don't, you know, hey, if Blacephalon ain't broke, don't fix it. We'll go until we lose one. We drop a game with Blacephalon, and we'll, we'll move on to something else. Landon, thank you so much for the gifted subs. Appreciate it. Thank you guys all for the awesomeness this week as well. All right, let's bet. Let's see what we can do. And thank you guys all so much for the contributions and everything. It makes a huge difference for the production of this channel uh, as well. Uh, we, see, we got the lecture to start. It's tough, like, because I don't necessarily always want to start Blacephalon. It's fine. I'd rather do that than Pidgey. Blacephalon is, like, harder to retreat into a Jirachi early on where the Pidgey can just be retreated simply. But then again, Blacephalon's like harder to KO. So it's like, you know, you got this back and forth. 
Thank you guys so much. Uh, the you know all of this makes a huge difference as far as the production of the channel as well. Uh, we were able to get ourselves a new camcorder. Hopefully, you guys got to see the League Cup. We were using our new camcorder for our top-down tabletop stream, and I'm really happy with the quality of the production. It just is really kind of, uh, you know, it's getting to a point where I'm really happy with it. And also, the Sword and Shield tabletops are going to be absolutely busted. I've got a new rail system that we just picked up to film the top-down tabletop streams for Sword and Shields. So that's going to be excellent as well. Really stoked about it. Now we do have to really worry about this Cross Division GX. Taking out all of our stuff. I think I giant hearth here. I still think it's probably correct. And then we could heat factory. We'll Professor Elms and then heat factory. I think it is correct to Elms and just set up two Pidgeys. Yeah. So we're going to do this, that. No. Two. Yep. And then I can heat factory and get an even bigger hand. Or I could wait till next turn to heat factory. The giant hearth is like super good for me to have two. So I might want to save that one more turn and get like another use out of Giant Hearth. Yeah, I feel like I want one more use out of Giant Hearth. Okay. So we're going to pinch the Heat Factory for one more turn. Yeah, and they got the Marshadow already. So maybe they use the Marshadow and deny me the Giant Hearth. That's fine. This hand is not as good, but it is what it is. Hopefully they don't get a Solgaleo GX into the discard. That'd be great. If they could just not have an attack other than Megalopunny and Jigglypuff, what, or Espeon and Deoxys? Rude. Pumping your own giant hearth. Grow up. Oh, jumping balloon. Let's go. All right, we're in there. 60 damage. I can take that. We've got some welders. It's tough. I don't necessarily want to bench the Jirachi yet. Because cross division GX. All right, fail there. We need to fire. Not quite there. I will take a Pidgey, but I'm not going to bench it yet. We're just trying to like prepare our board as much as we can for the cross division. And I don't want them to get a three prize cross division GX if I can help it. I don't know if it's going to be possible to prevent, but well, we're going to try. Capigiotto one more time. Um, I guess, yeah, we're just going to, we're going to bite Pidgeotto one more time. We have fire crystals, good. And then that way, next turn, I could potentially welder two. I don't want to bench this Jirachi or the Victini or the Pidgey to try and anticipate. 70, please. 60. Yes. Let's go. 60. Not a big difference, but it is a difference. Wow. Just another jumping balloon, you say. All right, chats. Brace yourselves. We can do this.
Okay. I think I want to poke a gear first, potentially thin the deck. Before I start air mailing. Fire crystals, good, but not as good as it would be if I had more fires in the discard pile. Heat factory, also good. That is actually just great. So then we're going to heat factory. I have two fires. It's going to be three. Okay, and then we can welder, and I need to find a flint. I have plenty... need flint. Does that do it or are we one short? I think we're one short, right? Oh, geez. Yo, I can quick attack that Mew Mew for knockout if I take this, but yeah, I do believe we are one short. It's cool. It does it? All right, cool. I hadn't counted yet. Oh, because I need five. Oh, we're chilling. Math is hard. All right, so I got the one attachment. I've got six total. I would have figured that out. All right. They going to scoop it up? He scoops, but does he score? All right, we're safe to bench these fellows now, too. Now that we are now worrying about cross division. And, yeah, I can just throw another one of these down, too. Ah, uh, no, we don't want to bench lock ourselves, so it's just fireball circus. The filthy five. Yeah, we're chilling, chat. We're chilling. I forgot that... Uh, I'm going to take the guaranteed fire energy as well. Forgot that the blazer damage was there. I was thinking I needed six. I was kind of like tunnel visioned into needing six. But nah. A blazer damage got us there. So that's good. <laughs> Valero. What was, oh my gosh. That was a long time ago. Someone who can have audio on leak. What's in the uh, what's in that clip, Valero? I can't listen. It'll disrupt the audio experience. And I think we're fine here. Now, the scariest thing about this matchup, obviously, is that Espion Deoxys, they weren't able to get it quickly. So, we're cool now. I think that... Honestly, Green's Blacephalon seems probably a little bit more favored against Mewtwo and Mew because you don't have these Pidgeotos that you rely on in order to get the cards that you need for knockout. You just have these 120 hit point Blacephalons in play. And since Blacephalon does have 120 hit points... Oh, we are chilling. Big chilling. I'm going to airmail first. Great Catcher and five would be fantastic. Don't think it's happening, but, eh, you know, shoot your shot. Ah, ask and you shall receive, chat. Classic scenario. Five? Five will not do it. We do need six, because we're at ten. Right? Yeah, right. Five would get us a little bit short. So, hmm. Do not think there's any further dig we can do. 260. We are just out of range. It's cool. We can, uh... We can welder. Yeah. Yeah, it can't hurt. We'll welder two here and see if we get another fire crystal. We 
did not. That's fine. I'm cool just going Fireball Circus this active for knockout. And then knockout to Dene for game. Yeah, that's what we're going for. We're just going to go for the Dedenny for games. Since I already have the Great Catcher, I don't really need that much in order to make it happen. And by saving the Great Catcher, instead of getting Dedenny first, obviously, we put ourselves in a situation where it's like, uh, I'm not going to get stamped as hard. Getting stamped to two is way better than stamped to one. Right, Blake, yeah, we could have gusted up and hit it for 250. No, uh, it's you never really want to do that. They put themselves in a situation now, though, where they get knocked out with five energy with the second rainbow. Never really want to waste your great catchers, usually, to bring Pokemon out and then hit them for not a knockout. There are, like, select situations where it's like you need to chase the energy and kind of, like, aggress on the energy. But in a format where there is such limited gusts, that is usually a risky play. But there are definitely situations where it's like, okay, if you're playing against ADP, for instance, and your opponent, you know, has an ADP with one energy on it, turn one, and you have an opportunity to bring it up and, like, hit it for half its, you know, hit points, it's usually pretty strong. All right, we're going to get our get ourselves a couple of airmails. All I need is one energy in order to win the game. Well, not there yet. Is this technically... No, no. This... Here we go! Hmm. Thanks so much, Valero, for that gifted sub to trust your pilot. Thanks, Valero. Okay. I could heat factory. I think that's probably correct. A little bit short of game here. They've used their GX attack, though. Three fire crystals down. They're telling me well played? Oh, I don't have it yet. See, I can't retreat, right? Retreat of two, that would only give me three onto the... Oh, can I do it though? Yeah. Retreat, retreat two, three, no. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, yeah, that'd do it. Retreat two, we take three, we gust a Dene, we hop burn GX, that's it. We got there, chat. Oh, I was there. I was there, Pandage. Fear not. We were the gears they were a churning. We were uh <laughs> the, gear, the gears were spinning. We were gonna get there. Oh yeah. We got in there. Excellent. Yeah, broken deck. Thank you so much, Valero, for that gifted sub. Yeah, the hot burn. I was like trying to figure out the retreat there and like how much how many energy I was gonna have. First, I was gonna see if I could do it with Blacephalon. So I was kind of like looking for that wing con. And then when I didn't hit that wing con, I was like, all right, started looking for second wing cons. And we're like, oh yeah, the Heatran. Heatran's actually an easier win con. So I should should have been looking at that. That first, because my energy was on board really. You guys remember when the second place worlds list played two copies of Heatran? What a crazy deck. Remember that Blacephalon GX deck chat? Two copies of Heatran. The madness. Two copies. 
I don't think a single deck has played. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's not. <laughs> Edwin, yeah, you're correct. I mean, anybody who's seen me at a tournament play, and it's like, obviously, when I'm playing at a tournament, like, the, the difference in gameplay is massive. Um... You know, if anybody's seen me play at a tournament, I'm completely dialed in. I'm not really talking. I'm very serious. You know, not goofing around. I'm not making jokes, usually. We're just uh, very stern, very serious, very focused. And that's because, like, you know, um, what you guys see me here, <clears throat> what you guys see me acting like here, what you guys, this is like really me, and this is how I am, this is how my personality is, but when it's time to compete, yeah, we turn that game face on, and we focus. But naturally, oh, between rounds I goof around and stuff, for sure. But naturally I am a very, um, you know, aloof person. As you guys kind of see a little bit of that, while I'm streaming, because I, you know, we stream for five hours, four or five hours. I'm not gonna keep my like intense game face for four or five hours, not to mention that would not be that fun. So you guys get to see who I really am, and that's, you know, pretty aloof. Uh, I'm <laughs> pretty aloof person. Natalie can attest to the fact that you know, I'm kind of a goober, that's for sure. Uh, that does not mean that I am not good at the game, obviously. I can I can hold my own in a competitive setting, that's for sure. And I definitely know how to switch it into, you know, to game time. All right, like we're about to do right here. Come on, deck. Knock this dude out. Turn one. I don't know, Chad. What do you guys? You guys go for it. I mean, I guess we're going for it. Well, we need a, uh, yo. Give me just a. All we need is a fiery flint. Come on now. G G G G G's G G's G G's. No re. That's it. See ya. In the Blacephalon mirror fun. Yeah, turn one, 200 damage. Free matchups. Skadoosh. Oh, yes, for sure, Ambi Turner. Yes, I play casually with my friends all the time. And when I'm playing casually, um, I'm super a goon. <laughs> 